Hey everybody, welcome back. Duffly Gaming back with more Blood of War. And we're still talking about Dionysus. Now, last episode we finished up, you know, with the birth of Dionysus and basically how he became to be the god of wine and how he basically just kind of went about the countryside going mad and then you know, he was like, hey, I'm excited to his return. He pretty much told everybody how to make wine. So, we're going to talk about a couple of festivals. So, there's the... It's called the Amphisteria. Your progress is yeah, Amphisteria. I'm just having to double-check the reading. But be warned. Uh, based on the flower festival. Once you ascend to the upper levels of the temple, you will not be able to return without Pandora's box. Basically, the point of no return. So anyways, so this is the celebration of Dionysus' gift of wine to mankind. And, you know, there's a bunch of drinking festivities and things like that, and at the very end of it, it ends As in the last day. rose through the massive temple constructed to guard Pandora's box, he realized it was a monument not only to the gods of Olympus, but to the madness of the mortal who had designed it. He'd conquered the lower floors of Pandora's temple, but what lay in wait above would test even the greatest of them. Okay. So, at the end of it, it concludes with a sacred marriage that symbolically drew the fertility, the fertility powers of the god into the city, so basically it kind of, you know, it would bring the connection between the fertility of human fertility, you know, giving birth, being able to, you know, produce children, as well as wine with the whole, like, you know, the vines produce grapes, the grapes produce the wine, they were fertility, you know, fertility through, well, through that direct, through, I talk to them. So, on the first day, it is the Pithokia. P-I-T-H-O-G-O. Otherwise known as Jaro. And Pithos is just means large storage jar. And they bring it in from the countryside at the river. The celebration of the new wine, New Year's Vintage, basically. As well as it helps to be a way to like release the souls of the day. So, you know, they can come up for festivities or they can be released from the grave to go and join the festivities or go to the river. And the city will basically just, it just opened itself up. To, you know, Dionysus himself, up to the dead. And he would be brought They would have some sort of like sacred ritual, like, like, uh, kind of like a float, kind of like on a ship, that they would bring it in and you can bring it into the town. It would just be like a lot of things, just blow it into the town. And that's kind of how day one was. It's just the celebration of, you know, the new vintage being opening, the celebrating of the dead. You know, they were very, like, honoring and celebrating that, yes, he may have passed, but he Kratos alive. had been in service to the gods long enough to know the harpy had been sent as a warning, a reminder from his former master of the decision that had cost Kratos everything. Had it been that long since he'd almost met his end at the hands of the barbarians? That long since he'd traded everything to save himself? The sky split apart, and the god of war stepped through. Descending from Olympus, he saw the makings of a god in a mere mortal. Ares would save Kratos. He would turn him into the perfect warrior, his servant on Earth. Only a simple pledge of loyalty was required. My life is yours, Ares. 
From this day, I shall carry forth your will. And his fate was sealed. As promised, Ares rescued his new disciple, bringing forth the power of a god. Destroying those who would slaughter Kratos and his men. As for Kratos, no mere sword and shield would befit the newest servant of the God of War. Those are some ugly hybrids. The Blades of Chaos, forged in the foulest depths of Hades. Once attached, the chains remained so, chained and seared to the flesh, a part of the bearer's body, a permanent reminder of Kratos' pledge. Are his teeth so? In return, ultimate power. The rage of Ares exploded from within. But soon, he would learn the true cost of such power. A cost too high even for Kratos to pay. Wretched beast! I know who it is you serve! Return to your master! Tell the god of war I am his no longer. Tell him he is not safe while I walk the earth. I will find Pandora's box. And I will use it to see him tremble and fall before me. And that is where we're going to start off with day two of the Anthesteria. The day two is the Coeys, or Wine Jugs. And it is called the Oinakoe. O-I-N-O-C-H-O-E. Oinakoe. It's a weird pronunciation or a weird... It's got... <laughs> Three continents. Just weird. Oh well. But basically, what the Oenakuma is, it's a. It's about two years. It's kind of, you know, some people say more, some people say less. But it's a jug used to pour the wine. So basically, it's like a giant wine bottle, in a sense. And. During the festivities, it's actually before or after the music has brought the competition. And it's kind of, it's kind of a strange object because uh, even though that it's just in a celebration kind of thing. We still kind of see it as like the dead are still out there. They're still kind of wandering the streets kind of thing. So it's kind of like, even though yes, they have a lot of reverence for the dead, they're kind of like, can you celebrate? We're here. It's a little... Don't get me wrong. But it's still kind of that like third deal kind of thing. And the rules for the drinking contests themselves, they kind of go uh, in a sense almost in the, like in the opposite direction of what the like, social norms are. And I was like, you know, if you've ever seen like the where it's like a kind of discussion with somebody, they might do that. They might do it as like maybe like a form of a nightcap. You know, it wasn't so much of like, let's get drunk! It was more of like, we were a hard, you know. We shall have our one glass a day. Pinkies up! Kind of. That's kind of how they went about their wine drinking. Now, during the normal drinking, how they used to do everyone drinks from the crate, which is a large drinking vessel, similar to the Oenakui, but just. The Oenakui was kind of more of a, like a jug. It had more of like a pouring design to it. Wide in the base, wide in the middle, and then kind of like narrow at the top. The crater was more of just like, like a big cup. Like a two-handed big cup. 
kind of like a... Uh, almost like a cloud. A big cloud. Not a technical cloud attack, but a super... Big cloud. Oh, well, okay. And that was placed typically in the center. Kind of like a punch ball, almost. Yeah, some of the things are like a punch ball. You go up there, you throw it in, dip your cup, and you go lay down the you pour it in, and then you go. And while uh, drinking, it would be. This is, again, this is all during the festivities. Is you only drink during the night. You're drinking during the night, you're drinking. You know, the only time is from like, you know, sign up. Or sign down and something. And there's also the final back conversation. Again, going back to the kind of Game of Thrones rules where you know, where we might not be plotting a murder or like how to kill Daenerys Targaryen, but we're you know. Hey Dave, how was your day? Oh mine was good. Yeah, this one was good. Yes it is. Now during the drinking contest, everyone gets their own Oh, we're not going And that's what you do. So, it's kind of like you did it. You bring your own booze and you drink your own stuff. It's just what you do. Or sometimes it's what you do. And, you know, the contest is alright, I got this two liters of wine. I'm going to be the first person to finish it. And everybody else. At this, wherever we're having this contest, they're trying to drink theirs and finish theirs first as well. And no talking. Very, very, there's just very few. But it's usually like that uncomfortable silence of, oh, let's just drink. I don't want to talk. Let's just drink. Once, you know, everything is done, you know, after all the drinking is done and everybody's either drunk, feeling good, freezing up to you, know, then everyone's like, let's go to the top. It's this huge procession. Everyone can march, you know, bring their own aquas, and they bring, they go to the Temple of Dionysus, which is in the marshes. Dionysus in Naos, which is one of the marches. And they dedicate their own life and bring it to kind of be like, you can't make good birds. Here's my own people. Thank you. That was kind of feeling. He gave me good wine this year. Yay! And again, what some of the participants can do is like, you know, it's very voluntary if they want to do it or if they want to do it, have to. But some of your maps are going to make it look like you know, the chart. Okay, do you do it? 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 Yes, they're remembering me on this day. Great Aunt Vivian, uh, Uncle Charlie, whoever on this day. But if like, they're celebrating that way, to represent that, you know what? They had a lot of life. They got to enjoy it. Why not bring the, essentially bring the essence of them with us to that temple so we can be like, hey, he's here, she's here. And when they open the new line, when the new vintage comes, it's, it's kind of, it has a dual purpose where the new line, it's a new year. It's a new, new batch of wine. It's a symbolizing purpose. But at the same time, as we open up the new batch, the old batch, it's gone. Which is symbolizing, you know, with every life, and there is a mortality. That's what typically you know, like I said, it's like that being you know, yearly, every other year, a couple of years or whatever. They show that, alright, 
is it? There's no talent. The new one, the old one is gone. Everything is normal. Everything is normal. And that means Damon is here. Now, and it's kind of more of like a standard time, but it's not so much of a huge like, Mardi Gras. Ooh, we're going to the temple! It's more of it's a hole we open the casts to remind ourselves that mortality exists. For every birth, there's a death. For every death, there's a birth. And it's in the power of the second day. And Chaitoy, C H Y T R O I, pops. It kind of switches. It kind of goes like, well, I guess maybe we're kind of underdone in a somber tone. A little kind of, hmm, 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 down and down. But, this is a subtle question. Let the rage of the gods drive your blades, So, they would have some bodily memories at that time. With the temple and the emotions. And, they had, like, there's a symbolic marriage between Basilina, or the queen, and Dionysus. The queen can represent Athens and the fertility of the city, <clears throat> but it could also symbolize the marriage of Dionysus to Ariadne. Ariadne. So it's kind of, you know, we're reminding ourselves of mortality, but there's a marriage. Hooray! The day is good. Things are great. No. So, speaking of Ariadne, she was the uh, daughter of King Minos of Crete, and he, Minos himself got himself into a bit of trouble by, he was supposed to make a sacrifice to Poseidon, but it's like, you know what, I kind of want to, I kind of don't want to, I want to I do something different. And what, you know, typically what the god is kind of demanding of you is if you have if you're a goat herder, goat farmer, you've got that. You've got that. That's your goat. That is the goat. Goat smell, goat smells, whatever. Goat problems. It's the best goat ever. So, when it comes time to sacrificing, guess which one goes first? The yeah, best goat. So, he knows this thing. You know what? You know what? I've got this really good, really good goal. His name's Steve. But I have the second, the second person. Hey, I'm gonna sacrifice him instead because I really like Steve. Steve is good. Steve is good. Very good for me. I'm going to sacrifice my second best player instead of my first one. Well, when Poseidon sees this and finds out about it, he's like, you know what? Okay. Alakazam and Hocus Pocus, poof! Your wife now loves that bowl. And I mean, loves that bowl. So, she gets, she just, you know, stares at that bowl, sun up to sun down, and she's just thinking, hmm, that's one sexy day. Hey, architect, come here. I need you to do something. I need you to build me a chain. One that I feel you could fit inside. And that looks like a cow. For no particular reason, this looks like a cow. So the architect's like, uh, okay. And the bull sees it, and he's like, damn, that's one sexy ass cow. Panky Panky goes to Zeus, with someone's queen inside the little costume, next to the middle, da da da, go for the middle And as soon as that baby is born, he knows it's like WTF, GTFO. No, that is one ugly baby. Architect? You already did whatever you did for my life, you did for your costume. So instead, build a library. Build a great library that 
that nobody should be able to discover. No one will be able to solve the mystery. As he does, he you knows brings the Minotaur in and leaves it. Which goes to show that which real things about the whole legend of the Minotaur to the left. Now, the Athenian hero, Theseus, he was told, hey, there's a Minotaur in this labyrinth somewhere. No one knows how to get into it, no one knows how to get out of it, and we just know that there's a Minotaur in somewhere. Go kill it. He's like, okay. Now, he was chosen because there have been multiple children of the Athenians. You know, what happened was send the kids to it just to come out of the way. Here, here, Mr. Manitou, that hurt us. That hurt us, Mr. Manitou. It just, here's, here's a little steam. Here's a little fire. Here's, here's a little tongue. Just, just keep, keep the Manitou and he's happy and he, he, he won't kill us. So it's the assistant's going to play. Even if that was just kids, that's pretty screwed up. Go, um, go kill that thing. And so, he goes and he gets some help from Ariadne, who is the daughter of King Minos. And, you know, King Minos is like, well, you killed the you killed the Minotaur. All you have to do in return is just marry her. Marry her rodney. As soon as you can as soon as you come out, you're gonna fight. So you like, okay. And then you can get alive. Sure, why not? And so she gets a rodney because so she keeps him stay. Just is it fine? Some say it might have been glowing, like a, like a Wonder Woman when I saw a tree that glows in the dark kind of thing, or it might have just been like a thing that like a typical standard glow in the dark, that green, kind of color to help them navigate how to get in the dark. But, faces. Along with, you know, some of the gods that I've already talked about, and some of the distant Greek men, he's, he's a bit of a douche. So, you know, he does, he does, and he kills the Minotaur, and he goes and he's got, and he's like, yay, I got Ariadne, I'm great, I have a life, yay! But, as opposed to being a great wife, I could possibly get, you know, rich daughter of the king. So I've got all of him. You know, I don't have to worry about working. I've got money. She can be my baby maker and whatever. No, he just decides, you know what? He's going to be stranded in the Isle of Nexus. So, you know, great. It would be kind of like being left in like. Party City! But I have no money, I don't know anybody here, and I have no way home. Not exactly, you know, the best way to start off your marriage. And, fortunately for her, two gods just happened to be like, dude, wanna go check out this party on? Hell yeah, let's go! As soon as I get there, they're like, dude, check out that chick. She's pretty hot. Yeah, she really is. Like, I'm in love with her. <gasps> Me too. Dionysus is one. And Glaucus, who's a minor sea god, he's kind of like underling to Poseidon. They're both kind of like, dude, this chick is pretty hot. And... So they decide that I'm like, how about this? Let's fight! No, maybe not. 
to the back here, so back up like slow, whoever wins. They get, they get the help. He was like, Dionysus is like, alright, cool. So they're fighting it out on the beach, and eventually Dionysus wins because he ends up getting Atlantis entangled in his own binds. A little scene. He gets them all tangled. And it's a bit embarrassing, you know, when you're supposed to be this, like, sea god who can control. Especially if you're on the beach, you can at least, you know, handle, like, hey, I can control the tide and wash you away. Ha ha ha, I win. But, you no, know, he gets beaten by the god of wine. Basically, he gets beaten by a dog. So it's a slight embarrassment to me. So. Dionysus wins, and he goes up to Ariadne, and he's like, hey, baby, how's it going? And she's like, hey, mister, how you doing? And they're saying, no, they're getting hitched. They get a couple babies, out, you know, going, and what Dionysus does is he ends up placing the wedding crown of Ariadne in the sky as the constellation of the Galaxy. So it's kind of one of those, like, here's, here's a big wedding gift for you. I might not have a crown, but here's the Corona Borealis. And it's, I mean, that's kind of a cool gift, I guess, if you want to say it. And that's just, you know, that's, you know we're still on day three of this Anthesteria. But just a kind of quick, you know, here's how Dionysus and his wife got together. So, unfortunately, even though there is no with Somber, and then we celebrate the wedding, it's kind of a roller coaster. It's down and then up, and then it's going to come crashing down. Now, when, he, when Dionysus first introduced wine, to the Greeks, he gave it to the farmer, Icarus, and he's like, hey, share it with your neighbors. Just enjoy it. Share it with your neighbors. Well, the problem is, is as opposed to, like, maybe savoring it, or maybe we should learn what this is, so maybe we can find a way to reproduce it, they just don't, like, party! drink it, and they drink it, and they drink it, and they drink it, and then they end up passing out. His family sees us. His, Icarus' his family sees us, and they think he's poisoned. You know, they, they're, I'm sorry, um, when they see them all passed out, all his neighbors, all of Icarus' neighbors passed out, they think Icarus poisoned him. And so, his family members of his neighbors, Killed Achilles. His daughter, Aragorn, finds body, and she's so upset by it that she ends up hanging herself. So not exactly goes the best way possible. But I think this is a good spot to stop. Like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy it.